The world doesn't care enough about pollution. We think of pollution as an environmental issue. We do not think of pollution as a health issue. It kills more people than war, than hunger, than malaria or AIDS or tuberculosis. All of these pale in comparison. In 2015, pollution-related diseases accounted for 9.6 million deaths. 92% of that burden is in low- and middle-income countries. That is big for us. It's big in terms of the distribution of the problem. To put it in plain speak, the distribution is unfair. It's not been on the public radar because there's been a lack of understanding of just how endemic this problem is and how many people are impacted. It's been forgotten. We need to make people aware that pollution is damaging them, damaging their children. It may not be visible, but it's nonetheless very real. It is about a huge loss of economic, community, and vital human ability. And that's why pollution should receive the attention and the fix that it deserves as a crusher of human capacity. Human beings are wired to respond to immediate threats. Infectious diseases like Zika, like Dengue, that make people quickly and obviously sick really get the public attention. By contrast, non-communicable diseases, chronic diseases that are caused by pollution, learning disabilities, cancer, chronic lung disease, take years to play out. The connection between cause and effect is not visible and people put it in the back of their mind. We're all exposed and all at risk, but the effects are seen most heavily on the very young and on the poor. The exposure of the poor to pollution is uh, twofold. One is involuntary exposure, where the pollution is being caused by other people. The other kind of pollution that they're exposed to is one that they generate themselves artisanal gold miners who use mercury in their processes, tanners who use hexavalent chromium, battery recyclers who are exposed to lead fumes. In many cases, they are aware of what they're doing to their bodies, but they need to put food on the table for their families, and uh, they don't see any alternative. And again, it's the children that are most affected. One of the most startling findings in the last several decades really has been the greater vulnerability of the developing fetus and young child to toxic chemicals and pollutants. Brain development is a highly choreographed, tightly programmed process and any misstep can have serious effects on the child's ability to learn and to contribute to society. We really have a moral obligation to take the science that we have now and apply that urgently. There's air pollution, water pollution, soil, and workplace issues. Within each of those categories, there tend to be the same kind of problems that show up again and again and again. And this is how we should look at pollution, not as some huge overwhelming issue, but a series of little problems that each need to be solved individually. There are parts of pollution that have been looked at in the international development agenda. There's been a lot of work to improve water supply. And over the last 20 years, we've seen the number of deaths from water pollution drop really substantially. That should serve as a model for what we ought to be doing now. There's an implicit assumption that's been there for long that uh, part of development is unavoidable massive pollution. That it does not have to be that way. I was growing up in India in the 50s. The air was clear, crisp, cool, wonderful. Things changed in 1991 when the closed Indian market opened up to the world. There was an explosion of industrialization and with that expansion has come more cars, more traffic, more congestion, more pollution. India has become vastly more dangerous over the last 20 years because of the air pollution. Dangerous in a way that we've really never seen on the planet. If you take a broader economic perspective, the health effects of pollution constitute an economic problem. 
because sick people can't go to work uh, or they have to stay home and have other people care for them. And so society incurs all of these costs. Air pollution and climate change, which are two of the greatest threats to health, are linked very closely because they have a common source, fossil fuel burning. If we can integrate the toxics agenda into the climate change agenda, we'll bring about reductions in climate change and greenhouse gases, but we'll also save a lot of lives. In 2015, India joined the Paris Agreement. India has accepted a very ambitious target to shift from coal to solar. In due course, almost 30 to 40 percent of India's energy needs will come from solar energy. It's going to be a long, hard struggle, but India has made a start and we'll see success before too long. There's a series of smelters and those are all shut down. The mine is closed, but the smelter waste is everywhere and it has been everywhere for as long as everyone there has been alive. It's not a secret. It's just part of life in Kabwe. It's a poison town. Soil pollution is the one area of pollution that's least recognized because it's not something you can see floating in the air or the water has a horrible color to it. Soil pollution toxicants don't break down, they stay in the soil and can continue to poison people for generations. We show up, pull out the fabric, and cut it to measure for each yard. We wheelbarrow in clean clay soil to cover the fabric. The fabric is both a barrier and a marker later. If you hit the fabric when you're digging, stop. Below there is dirty. Each house, it's one family that those kids don't have that daily impact with lead anymore. No matter where you go, parents never want to see their kids getting poisoned. A kid who has brain damage from lead poisoning is never going to have the full potential of his life. And it can't be fixed, but it can be prevented and the next kid can be protected. The trajectory is encouraging, but the pace is slow. And I think the scale thus far is not sufficient. But I see a growing awareness of the necessity of rising to the occasion to tackle the challenge. Pollution doesn't have to be solved in one day. It won't be solved in one day. The way to get there is to set a five-year target, a 10-year target, a 15-year target. And the beneficiaries of that progress are going to be the country's children. If I were to look back 20 years from now, I would hope that all of these countries have adopted pollution as an issue that's something fundamental to their own development strategies. And they're committed to doing things in healthy and productive ways. That's how the world should look. <laughs>